Hey YouTube, how's it going? Yak Science here with uh, another OCHEM video, this time on SN2 reactions, okay? It's typically the first reaction mechanism that you learn in uh, organic chemistry when you're learning about mechanisms. Um, so let's talk about what it stands for first. SN2 stands for bimolecular nucleophilic substitution. Let's break that down a little bit. Bimolecular is called bimolecular because it involves two molecules reacting in a single step. Nucleophilic, we just learned in the previous video what a nucleophile is, right? It's a source of electrons. And substitution, because we're going to see a nucleophile substitute a leaving group. We'll talk about all of that. Okay? I want to show you the first, the very basic uh, mechanism behind SN2, and then we're going to talk about some characteristics and how it's different from other mechanisms. So let's take any molecule with an electrophile and a leaving group. Okay? The leaving group is something that can leave and be stable on its own. So let's look at an alkyl halide, for instance, this one right here. Okay, something like that. Now, if I were to point to this carbon, is this an electrophile? No, it's not, because it's only part of nonpolar bonds. This has no partial charges, no nothing. Neither is this one. This one, however, is, right? This one will be partially positive, because the bromine is partially negative, the electronegativity difference, right? So now let's introduce a nucleophile, a strong nucleophile. We'll learn why later, okay? Let's say we put this in uh, some NaOH. What will happen, right? How are these two going to interact? We know that the Na is positively charged, the OH is negatively charged. So let's isolate that OH real quick. Let's put it right here. Okay. Negative formal charge. Now this carbon we said is an electrophile. So what's going to happen is this very good nucleophile will attack Hopefully you guys know how to use curved arrows. If not, maybe I'll make a video on that. But it basically represents the movement of electrons. So this OH is going to attack this electrophilic carbon. But now, you'll notice something strange. This carbon now has five bonds, right? It's, it's bonded to this carbon, this bromine, this OH, and two hydrogens from before the reaction. Carbon cannot have five bonds. That's a pentavalent carbon, and that's a big no-no. That never exists. So what has to happen is something has to leave. That's where the leaving group comes in. Bromide, or bromine, will leave. These electrons in this sigma bond will go to the bromine and form bromide. So what are our products? They look something like this. We have our OH, now attached to the electrophilic carbon, and we have bromide ion. Don't let that plus sign confuse you. That's just plus because it's this and this, it's not a charge. Okay, maybe I'll erase that. Okay, these are our two products. Now you can see why it's called nucleophilic substitution. Our nucleophile replaced the bromine, okay? It's a pretty simple reaction mechanism, and I just wanna go over some, some properties of it real quick uh, with you. First things first, it's stereospecific. So in, uh, in chemistry, hopefully you learned about stereochemistry. It's basically about the three-dimensional structure of molecules. Um, so when we say that SN2 reactions are stereospecific, what we're really saying is upon attack, when the nucleophile, like OH- attacks the electrophilic carbon, it'll attack it from the back. It's called backside attack. And what that does is it inverts the stereochemistry of the original molecule. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have something like this, right? dashed lines um, iodine, okay? And let's say we react that with some NaBr, okay? That Br is negatively charged, the Na is positively charged. Where's the electrophilic carbon? Here? No, 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 yes. It's this carbon, right? It's attached to a leaving group. The I could leave. It's stable as I minus. So what's going to happen? Let's look at Br, right? I always like to isolate the nucleophile because Na is not really playing much of a role here. It's just a spectator ion, but that's not that important. Okay, again, it'll attack the electrophilic carbon, shoot these electrons up to the iodine, and now what do our products look like? We have the same carbon chain, but now what's the stereochemistry? It's inverted. So we'll have our bromine as a wedge instead of dash. Make sense? So now our bromine looks like that, and 
we formed as well. Um, some iodide ion. Okay? So that's what we mean when we say it's stereospecific. Stereochemistry is inverted always. SN2 reactions involve backside attack, and that always involves uh, inversion of stereochemistry at the attack site. There could be, you know, there could be some stereochemistry here as well, right? If you have like a, I don't know, an OH group here, but this isn't going to attack that carbon because OH is a terrible leaving group. We'll get, we'll get to that uh, later. <laughs> okay. So that's one property of SN2 reactions: stereospecificity. Okay. Another thing, just simply, you need a stronger moderate nucleophile. Okay. So if we were to say react our favorite molecule that I've been overusing probably with uh, some CH3OH, right, methanol in, let's say, uh, yeah, let's say it's in methanol solvent as well. What's going to happen? I mean, yes, we did say that, um, that oxygen has two lone pairs and it can be nucleophilic. Is it a good nucleophile? No, it's not. It's definitely not strong enough to attack and then make bromine leave. Big no-no, uh, because that, A, that would give oxygen three bonds, not very favorable, and then you'd have to deprotonate one of those hydrogens to make it stable. It's too much. This is not a good enough nucleophile. So typically, you want nucleophiles with a full negative charge or moderately good nucleophiles like uh, nitrogens with, with uh, lone pairs are typically good um, or moderate. You also want a polar aprotic solvent for SN2 reactions. Why do we want that? Well, that's because the nucleophile is stabilized, right, in polar aprotic solvent. Uh, polar protic solvents, remember, can, can form that hydration shell around um, a nucleophile. So let's say you have NaOH, right, and you put it in, and you put it in a, uh, or not NaOH, let's say you have NaBr, right, and you put it in polar protic solvent. Those H2O molecules or methanol molecules or whatever the solvent is will surround the NADR and hinder its nuclear helicity. So you want polar aprotic solvent, right? Like acetone, something like that. Now, primary and secondary, but not tertiary. What does that mean? That means that um, for a reaction to happen in SN2, the, the electrophilic carbon cannot be attached to two, I'm sorry, to three other carbons. It's two or less. So for example, Let's say we have this, we have this carbon right here, right? It's electrophilic, it's attached to the bromine, right? But will it be attacked via SN2 if we introduce like, let's say, NaCl or something like that? The answer is no, that, that chloride ion will not attack because there's simply not enough space. It's too cluttered here. So this will not happen. It would not attack the electrophilic carbon and kick out the bromine, no. That won't happen because this carbon is tertiary. It has C, that CH3, that CH3, and that CH2 are attached to that carbon. So that's a big no-no. SN2 will not happen if it's tertiary, only primary or secondary. And last thing to talk about, good leaving groups, right? In the past examples, we saw bromine leaving as a leaving group. We saw iodine as a leaving group. Um, but what makes a good leaving group? Simply put, a good leaving group is very stable on its own. It, it's happy to leave, you know? It's like, okay, fine, I'll leave, that's fine. So what contributes to that? Resonance is a big factor. So I prepared some really uh, typical uh, good leaving groups. So find, okay, perfect. So methyl sulfate ion is very good and you'll see why. It has a ton of resonance. Okay, sorry. Let me just get that real quick. Okay, you see that? That's a ton of resonance. These electrons are very delocalized. So if we were to attach this to say, you know, a carbon chain and introduce NABR or NaOH, that Br minus will definitely attack that carbon and this will be happy. This whole thing, right, will be very happy to leave because it's very, <clears throat> very stable on its own due to resonance. Okay, other molecules with a lot of resonance uh, one that you'll see a lot is tosylate. That's like your best friend when it comes to synthesis. Um, so tosylate looks like this. It's kind of complicated, but you get the hang of it. Perfect. So 
this is tosylate, also abbreviated as OTS. So you might think to yourself, this is kind of uh, scary to draw every time. So what chemists usually do, and what you could probably do, depending on your teacher, is instead of drawing all this, you could just attach it to a carbon chain by writing OTS. Okay. Also, a very good leaving group due to all this hyperconjugation and resonance. Okay. Perfect. What else makes a good leaving group? Uh, typically, the weaker the bond, the better the leaving group, and that makes sense. If something wants to leave it better not be super attached to that electrophilic carbon. So typically the bigger the atom, uh, the longer the bond length, and the longer the bond length, the weaker the bond, right? So iodine would be a better leaving group than a bromine, which is better than chlorine, which is better than fluorine. And that brings me to another important point. Fluorine, if that's attached to the electrophilic carbon, it's not going anywhere. SN2 will not happen. Uh, if fluorine is this guy, right, and you introduce NADR, no, it's not going. This bond is way too strong, okay? And finally, the last point to, uh, to make is stability, but that's just a general rule uh, and something we've talked about. If it's stable on its own after it has left, either by resonance or any other factor, uh, then it's typically a good leaving group. And remember, if fluorine is attached, and it is attached to the electrophilic carbon, it will not leave because it's such a bad leaving group. I also just realized that I, that I skipped uh, one concept, the fact that it's concerted. So concerted means that the attack of the nucleophile and the leaving of the leaving group happen simultaneously in one step. So um, when, we, when we did, let's say, this example, right, The OH attacked the electrophilic carbon, and simultaneously the bromine leaves. It's one step, uh, they happen together, and um, we'll learn in other mechanisms cases where it's actually separate, okay? Um, anyway, I hope that was helpful, and next will be SN1 reactions. Thanks for watching.